everybody welcome back to living in arizona now and today we are going up to the white mountains we're going to explore the petrified forest stop by sunrise ski resort see what's going on up in greer and check out some of these other native american relics across the highlands of the apache sit greaves uh, national park so if you're excited to go up the beeline up the mogollon rim into the white mountains and see what it's like up here in this winter wonderland here in january then stay tuned and don't forget to crush up the like button and subscribe to all you new subscribers. Now this here is the Mogollon Rim. You can see it is quite an interesting view looking down into Payson and beyond. Right here, we did show up just before the actual winter storm arrived, but you could still see the ice on this lake here. And that is quite interesting. I was throwing rocks across it and you could hear the hollow echoes of the ice and the water. Now once you get to the other side of the rim, you come into Heber Overguard and you can see right here Red Onion Restaurant is a really good place to stop and get a burger or a beer if that's what you're in the mood for as we continue to push into Pine Top Lakeside, which is actually a really cool place year round. And you can see we did rent an Airbnb up here at this condominium. Uh, there wasn't too much snow on the ground when we arrived, but two days later, the last day, it actually began to snow, and that was when it really got nice, but there was a little bit of light drizzles and whatnot out here, and then we ended up heading up the uh, White Mountains, up towards Mount Baldy, which is actually where the ski resort is, which you'll see here coming up. It's a pretty good Airbnb right here, out here in Pine Top. Uh, if you guys do like snowboarding and skiing and you don't want to go to the Arizona Snow Bowl up in Flagstaff, this is going to be your alternative to a really good time. Not quite as crowded or sold out. Uh, when we were up there, there was quite a bit of availability. If you wanted to get a lift ticket or uh, just be out there skiing and snowboarding without too many people around. Now this is 8,500 feet elevation, so as you're up here, when it snows, they do get blizzard-like conditions and it does dump a lot of snow out here, which can be good for you snowboarders, but also uh, be wary on the roads. And here we are now at Sunrise Ski Resort, 8 o'clock in the morning, not quite too busy by now. The earlier you get there, the better it is for parking and for getting uh, first come first serve treatment. Now, uh, they do a really good job of maintaining this place, in my opinion. Uh, they do have a lift that works just fine to get you up and down. Have the Bunny Hill. And just outside of Sunrise Ski Resort is going to be Greer. So, uh, Greer is also high elevation in a valley. They did have a fire here, but uh, this place is a great place to go year-round. Summers, really nice hiking. Winters, pretty cool hiking. Uh, it is a true winter experience when you come up here you are going to get snowpack depending on how much snow we've had it can vary though yeah so when many people think about Arizona they usually think about the desert right well here we are out in Greer and you could see look at this stream covered in ice actually we'll walk over here and show you just how much ice there is over the stream out here a bunch of logs that have kind of dammed up this little pool of water as you can see right here but uh really beautiful little setting right here and like a winter wonderland if you look over here and like i said earlier they do have some pretty good hiking so you'll want to take that stream up a little bit and there's a trail just watch out for bears so if you do come up here bring some bear spray they also get some mountain lions uh, plenty of elk and other kinds of deer up here as well now check this out this is actually a really cool diner i stopped in to get some biscuits and gravy and man that was pretty good so was the bacon
and just some great views up here of a sunny but cold brisk day out here in Greer. From here we ended up heading out towards X Diamond Ranch which is just on the outskirts of town. Over here you do need to book a reservation and uh, from what I understand they're actually pretty far booked out but this is where people go to fly fish and do other outdoor activities assuming they're available at the time you're up here. Along this road here on the right side if you look at the cliffs when you're coming in you'll actually see some petroglyphs on the side of the road. Definitely do not touch them, just look, but they're really cool to see uh, what the Native Americans were putting into the wall here on this cliff uh, hundreds of years ago. So you'll definitely be able to see it when you're driving on this road on various different rocks as you're coming in to the X Diamond Ranch. Here we are at X Diamond Ranch. Check out this uh, wood burning fire. If you're lucky on the day you get here, you can actually go to this uh, market here where they got fresh meat and uh, really good. But the big thing here is these musical instruments. So if the museum's open, you got to see this. Yeah, so if you look right here, you can see some petroglyphs carved into the stone by native uh, people who lived right here hundreds of years ago. So after we leave here, we head down to Eager and Springerville. We go stop by and get a burger and actually some uh, beer. And then uh, we kind of chill out, get ready for the next day. But before we do, we head over to Alpine just to see what's going on out there. We don't quite make it down to Hannigan Meadow, but again, what we're actually headed to next is where the big ticket is, which is gonna be the Petrified Forest coming up later on in this film. This is right here on the border with New Mexico. This drive from Springerville down to Alpine. It is the great wide open. I mean, there's nothing out here really other than just mountains and wilderness. That's what you're gonna get when you come out to Alpine right on the New Mexico border. All right, so the next day we head northeast. We go check out St. John's. For many of you who already look for land up in northern Arizona, you know St. John's is where the cheap land is. Well, here's a look at St. John's. It is pretty nice out here, but the town of St. John's, I don't know if it would draw me in. I could see kind of why the land is so cheap in a way. But if you like being out in the middle of nowhere on a big piece of property in a small town, then St. John's might just be for you. And uh, for me, it's just a little too small, nothing really out here in terms of commerce, not even a Walmart. They do have a dollar store, so that's something to keep in mind. But now we can finally head out to the big ticket here, which is going to be the Petrified Forest. And this is what really caught my attention because it is a geological site, has lots of interesting information for you uh, here. You can see the actual antiques and the petrified wood in this souvenir shop here. So now we'll head back out onto the road and go into the park. Uh, there is an admission to pay if you would like to go in here or if you have a year annual pass, no problem. They do have a museum here that you could stop in and do a trail. The big features here are gonna be Blue Mesa, Newspaper Rock, this here Rainbow Forest Museum, and some of these other trails uh, where you can actually see the petrified wood on the ground. So this Rainbow Forest Trail right here was actually the park headquarters back in 1906 to 1962, but now it is the museum. Uh, the landscape remains pretty much the same, but uh, the geology here is changing over time. But there's really a lot of interesting pieces and relics of wood that are petrified, which are basically fossilized wood right here. So now we'll go up the road here into the Crystal Forest and you'll see the geology gets more defined and interesting as you continue to press further into the park. Off to the right is going to be the Crystal Forest and here you'll discover that 
this part of the land was actually a swamp many moons ago and that's what led to the petrified forest being here today and as you go up the road they do have the blue mesa down here at the blue mesa you'll get a lot of interesting uh, topography that you can hike around walking trails this is actually a really cool place to hike Both the Blue Mesa and the Painted Desert here are very harsh terrains year-round, whether it's the winter or the summer. So just be aware that this is some super harsh hiking conditions. And here you can see the rock formation known as the teepees. Yeah, so when you come out to Petrified Forest, there's plenty of trails like this one here at Blue Mesa. Uh, lots of uh, paved trails that you can walk out and get great views of. Just amazing place because uh, you find out that this place was at the same latitude and longitude of Costa Rica at one point in time. And that's what made it tropical. And out here at Rio Perco or Perco River, this is actually where you will find a Native American site with some really cool petroglyphs down here of the solstice and some other interesting uh, rock carvings, drawings, if you want to call them that. So you'll definitely want to check out Rio Puerco if you like to examine the native peoples of this land. So one of the last areas you'll examine as you go across the highway and come out of the park almost, you will come to the Painted Desert and that is really where the extreme hiking conditions begin for those of you who are brave enough to go into the Painted Desert. But this area, the Kachina Point, Painted Desert Inn, uh, really cool views, lookout points, and if you're a photographer, you might get lucky and have a storm brewing on the horizon as you're filming or photographing the Painted Desert. So this will conclude our adventure into Northern Arizona for the weekend. If you guys do choose to do one of these trips, I think you'll enjoy it. It is something to do in the summer or the winter. Just dress accordingly. So thanks everyone for subscribing and crushing up the like button on these videos. Share them with your friends and family if you want to encourage them to go on this trip. And we'll see you guys on the next one.